Hi, this is Vicki Wu with Vicki Wu Marketing, and today we have probably our youngest entrepreneur that has ever been on the show. We have Roderick and Makai Walker, who run Kai's Baking Studio, and Makai is ten and a half years old. If you're listening on audio, you can't see how young she looks, and I wanted to make sure that you knew that. This is Vicki Wu, and as always, we're talking about the best tips for marketing your small business. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified of the latest updates. So I'm going to let them tell you their story, but how I found them, I was going through the drive through at Salada restaurant one day to pick up my salad that I had ordered online, and while I'm waiting for them to finish, I see this sign over in the corner of the shopping center and it has baked goods and my sweet tooth I can never pass up baked goods so while I'm waiting on my salad I searched and I found their website and opened their website and not only did they have a very special kind of baked items available but they had just such an engaging story about how their business started that I knew I had to get them on the podcast and let them share that and information about their business. So welcome, Roderick and Kai, and I want you to start by explaining the story about how you got started. Um, so we started off by we started off by baking baking just for charity for charity, and then we started seeing people saying if you would if you if you sold this, we would buy it. So then, then we started off from there. Then we started baking from our home, and now we're in a we have our own store. So to add to that, we started off uh, baking, doing fundraisers for church fundraisers, just helping with building funds, different drives and things that they had going on. We had a line going out the door and around the corner, so that started to make sense to say in her mind that, well, maybe we should have a business. And it was something that we didn't know if she really wanted to do because it, at you know six years old, that's not something that you hear a lot of people say that, okay, well, I want to have a business. But at six years old, uh, she actually committed to it. And uh, we went to a lot of different places. We did a lot of smaller events, bigger events. And eventually she kind of came out of her shell, not so shy, actually talking and actually showing uh, other people the side of her that we see all the time. And uh, we just continue to invest into her. And then eventually um, we pay for branding and other things like that. But eventually the business started to pay for itself. We moved from a home baker to a baker that actually had to go to a commercial kitchen. And it's just grown from there. Now I'd like you to also share, you have a story related to a special kind of baked item that you offer. And it's one that I look for all the time and I can't ever find. So share a bit of info about your special baked items in addition to your regular ones. We do, we do a couple of specialty items, but we primarily, our biggest specialty is our keto brand. We actually do some vegan and we also do gluten-free. Our keto brand is also gluten-free also. Uh, but we started doing uh, the vegan because our daughter has an egg and a dairy allergy. And we're very uh, tuned with trying to uh, cater to that. And when you hear that a nine-year-old has dairy and egg allergies, it's like her world is coming to an end. I can't have ice cream. I can't have cookies. Everything makes me miserable. So we started to play around with the recipe and made something that actually tastes good. And um, we, we nailed that to the point where she believes she needs to take a pill in order to eat the cookie that we gave her. So we figured out that we, we made it work. Um, and then eventually we started to realize that I needed to lose some weight. I realized that I started to do keto. And uh, basically it's a low-carb uh, diet. Um, it's a lifestyle change where you actually remove a lot of carbs from your diet, remove sugar from your diet. And um, I started doing that. And she said, well, what are you going to eat now? You don't eat any of our sweets. This is ridiculous because, you know, when you make cookies, you don't eat cookies. It's kind of fun. She, started, look, she said, well, Daddy, we're going to do this. So I worked on the vegan for her. And she started working on the keto, finding recipes and things that she thought I would like. So we started to make those together. And eventually, we came up with a product that we started to sell. And, I mean, it absolutely took off. I mean, the flavors, the, 
the cookies, the brownies, the, the bars, everything that we started to offer was something that was just different than what was in the market. And it was just, it was a game changer because it was something that I was allowed to eat that didn't impact my blood sugar, that didn't make me gain weight. And I actually lost uh, 75 pounds doing it and gained 20 since the COVID thing. But I'm working on getting those 20 back off. Uh, I think we all are kind of going through that struggle. But that's our, our keto brand, uh, which is one of the things that we do. And we, we take a lot of uh, pride in because it's something that impacts so many people's lives, especially um, people that are trying to lose weight, but also people that are diabetic. I mean, someone who is struggling to find something, you can't keep your blood sugar low. But if you find something that you like that doesn't raise your blood sugar, that's a win. And we take pride in offering things like that. I can relate to that a lot. While I'm not a baker, I, you know, I bake stuff for us. But when my second oldest son was young, he had a food allergy to red food dye. And it didn't make him, like, break out in a rash. It just made him super, super hyperactive. So he couldn't sit still in school if they had, like, a red jello at lunch. So we had to go through an elimination diet and get rid of all red food diet and so many things when you're a kid that are, you know, good special treats have red food dye in them. So we had to kind of take that into account and I went vegetarian about eight years ago now and while I still will do some egg and dairy, I find I don't tolerate it as well as I used to. So between your vegan treats and your keto treats because it's really easy to be vegetarian and eat a lot of sugar you know all the flour all the baked things pasta right. is for the most part vegetarian and bread and so i always try to look for things that are using some alternate cooking methods and that's why i was so excited to find your your store and we haven't lived here you're in houston so i'm sorry to everyone who's not in houston i don't know if you ship but um, we had just moved down here and then COVID hit and so we haven't got out a lot and we're trying to only do like a quick food pickup. So I was excited to find your place and now I've got you in my maps when I'm looking for a dessert. So what's your biggest seller? The Nothing But Joy cookies, which is an almond coconut and chocolate chip or our cheesecake brownie bites which are pretty popular. That's two things I'm gonna try the next time I'm there. So <laughs> remind me. When I come in and I say, what's your best seller? Remind me and I'm getting those. We will remind you. <laughs> we always have the cheesecake brownie bites, but nothing but joy kind of rotates like every other week or every two weeks. So if we have some, we'll definitely make sure we offer it to you. And then I know you also have some not dessert big things. You have like bagels. You mentioned you have uh, kolaches and some more like breakfast items. So it was everything I bought that day was good. The cinnamon rolls. I would also, you, you mentioned to me that people assume you put sugar in them because they're so good. And I would have believed that myself when I ate them. And they're really good. I popped mine in the microwave with some butter on top. That's how we used to do it growing up, warmed with butter. And they were so good. And it's not helping towards the 20 pounds I gained during COVID, I'm just saying. Well, but at least it's not as bad. <laughs> the, the low carb, uh, but there are only three carbs per cinnamon roll. So they don't punish you as much as something that might have up to 60 calories, I mean 60 um, carbs. So it doesn't give you that sugar rush. Like if I used to go to some brands and get a cinnamon roll, I would be buzzing for, for about 45, 50 minutes, and then I would have that sugar down and that crash, and then I'm ready to go to sleep, and then I need some more coffee, and then it's wash, rinse, repeat. This particular one is actually protein-rich, it's fiber rich and it's low carb. So you get the sweetness without, it's like the goodness without the guilt. So and it's one of our best sellers here. We sell out of that every single day. Um, every day we're baking cinnamon rolls. Um, I'm actually making cinnamon rolls now and they're proofing. Uh, so uh, tomorrow we'll be able to bake some cinnamon rolls. In the morning. So from the time that you started this as a business, you mentioned how you were baking for charity and then turned it into a business. How has the business grown? We started off as just baking it out of our home. Then we went to just going to a, com a shared commercial kitchen. And then now we have a store, a storefront. 
So it, it's grown a lot. I mean, baking at home is one thing. We outgrew that really quick to the point where we couldn't keep up with the demand. So we rented at a kitchen, and then that really wasn't working because we couldn't always get the hours that we were looking for. Uh, so eventually we found a place that let us rent monthly. So we start renting monthly with 24-hour access. And, you know, after some of those things changed, we actually moved towards uh, finding our own location so we can actually produce more things and do things without limitations. So um, it's, just, it's just a growing process. And we've all we've been online since uh, year one. When you first started, it sounds like you had plenty of customers in kind of in the wings waiting. But all businesses have marketing challenges. So what was yours when you were first starting? The, the marketing challenges were um, unique. Some of the things, just trying to develop an SEO, trying to um, figure out where to place things on Google, where to place things on Facebook. Uh, Bing wants things one way, Google wants things another way, Facebook wants you to advertise here. We have to use software to make an ad look right for, for Google, but then you have to make an ad look different for Facebook. And you, you create something you think it looks good, and then the other medium doesn't accept it. Then you have to figure out, well, if I post here, I can migrate it to all these other places. And it was literally uh, consuming time, and it still consumes a lot of time. My wife does a lot of our social media and the marketing, and I do a lot of proofreading and editing and creation of things. I'm not usually the person that, that does that, but it's very difficult to learn your market, to understand who your target market is. Um, like sometimes, like, like like when you go into a store, if you go into Macy's or any other store, you, you think that, okay, there's a lot of men who need to lose weight, but men are not big shoppers. I mean, it's a reason why are, are the men's section is about the size of a closet and the women's section and the kids' section is the size of the rental store. Um, so it shows who spends the money and you have to learn how to manage your marketing dollars to target the, um, the people who actually spend the money. I mean, not saying that men don't spend money, we do, but a lot of times we don't respond to marketing and to those cues the way. And, and just learning those things and going back, I learned from my MBA, I'm not a marketing major, but I did take marketing classes and just having to pull from all of those things, watching tons and tons of webinars and just going through the rigmarole and wasting money and not understanding uh, the pay-per-click versus the targeted ads, program, pro, programmatic ads, et cetera. It, it's intimidating because it's a whole other world and it's totally different from what the radio stations and what the TV offers when you're getting on social media, you can target down to a level that's unbelievable. But the, the training is not there, and a lot of training that is there is bogus. I mean, so really you need to go with somebody who's a pro who knows what they're doing that can point you in the right direction and not just try to uh, separate you from your um, hard-earned resources to grow your business. I get that same kind of overall feeling from a lot of people who come to me to be clients there's so much information out there on Google, on whatever search engine you search, on YouTube, and it's not all the best advice. And it always pains me when I see people giving advice that I'm just sitting there shaking my head going, no, no, that is not how you do it. And so that's part of why I focus so heavily on entrepreneurs because, you know, I've made all those mistakes in my long marketing career and learned what works, not just for me, like some of the coaches that are out there, they've only done it one way. I've done it for hundreds and thousands of clients. So I know kind of the base that works for everyone and then the pieces you can add and layer on top of that that work for different industries. But I, even when I go search something, and it may be something I already know, but I may be doing like keyword research or something. And there's just so much information and 90% of it is probably something you'll never use. But finding that small percentage of what you need is Correct. crazy. And that's part of why when I saw the story about your company, I reached out on social media, got your wife and offered to provide some assistance as one of my chosen businesses to support and offer you some advice along the way. Whenever you find somebody, it's somebody who's trying to sell something like a service um, and everything is geared towards that or it's geared towards Amazon fulfillment or it's geared towards this or to that. And 
it's not cookie cutter. That doesn't fit our business model. We can't send products that are fresh baked to, to somewhere to sit because we're just going to end up losing products and people don't get the quality. And understanding your, your, your marketing plan, not just from the viewpoint of what uh, someone else has said, this is what's made me a bunch of money, but that doesn't work for us. So we appreciate just, just looking at what we do and um, helping us to fine tune it. That is just awesome. And another thing that kind of frustrates me is that people who, because they only know one way to do it, they have one software you have to use, or you know, a couple different ones you have to use for their plan, and it doesn't work with what you already have, and instead of saving you time and money, it's actually costing you more, and that's one of my pet peeves as well. So we mentioned COVID and you know the extra 20 pounds. It used to, for college, was called the freshman 15. I guess this is the COVID 20. So how has that, though, impacted your business? Uh, the, the COVID has impacted our business in several ways. Um, it impacts just every day because our kids are at home and are at the kitchen with us. And, you know, I'm tech support. I am uh, the assistant teacher and everything else. But really what impacted is that we were actually poised for one of our biggest years as far as growth before COVID. Um, we were hitting numbers that were better than every year. And when you get to year three and you're moving into year four, you're seeing that, that the numbers start to move in the area where you can finally say, well, man, I, I've made enough to where I can, you know, pay myself for all the effort that we put into it or reimburse some of the money that we put into it. And it slows some of those things down. I mean, there's some times where we've had to be creative. We had to start doing deliveries. We start doing contactless deliveries. Uh, my daughter, she's going to different places with a mask on with gloves and uh, putting something at someone's porch, and we did those things. We had contact with pickups at our uh, at this kitchen, at the previous kitchen we were at. So we had to constantly reinvent because uh, even the farmers markets, which were a big piece of what we did, a lot of those were shut down. I mean, almost 80% of those were shut down, and the ones that were left were a small fraction of. Um, the business that we do. So we had people that went to other markets and we were really spread out and that really scaled back. So it was just, it, it was, it was very challenging to constantly have to reinvent and then also to explain to our daughter, you know, like the numbers, like say, hey, this is where we were going. This is what we thought was going to happen. This is what we were planning on doing. This is going to allow us to do this, 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 which would give us back more time and hire more people. And now that seems like it's been uh, delayed. And um, it's not denial, but it, it is, it's, it's not like delay is not denial, but we definitely feel the, the fruits of that, even having consistent help because uh, some people are not willing to come to work or we, we've lost help. So a lot of the momentum that we have has been, um, has slid backwards, but um, we're, we're, we're going up a hill no matter how much grease is on it. Uh, we have stakes, we have uh, boots with, with nails in it. We're, we're just walking up the hill best way we can and uh, it's frustrating I mean especially for my daughter who is a very people person and I feel like the mask stifles her voice I mean she she doesn't have as strong as a voice so there's times where she wants to take her mask off but she knows she can't take the mask off so it's kind of made her reclusive somewhat with with interacting with the customers because she feels like people can't hear her but she 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 rises to the challenge and speaks up louder and, you know, so we've kind of made those adjustments, but it's been a, 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 a never ending adjustment. I, I don't think we've ever experienced so many adjustments in one year. Um, I mean, I, I think that she could, that, that smile and look down is just like, yeah, there's a lot of adjustments. I like to call it pivots because one of the, used to be one of the side businesses I had mainly for my own enjoyment. I teach ballroom dance. And obviously, can't be doing that right now. But when you dance, there's a turn called a pivot, and it's for when you're going one direction and then you want to go the other direction. So I've been doing a lot of pivoting this year, and I feel like I'm just in a constant like spiral spin or something. What do you wish someone had told you about being an entrepreneur before you started? And I'd kind of like to get both of your takes because. You mentioned you have an MBA, and that teaches you a lot about that. And Kai, you were only six when this started. So what do you wish you'd known? 
Um, I wish I would have known that that sometimes you don't always get to do the things that you want, but you have to balance out. You're gonna have to balance out between a activity like soccer or volleyball and work. And what else have you had to realize that you don't always get paid, even if you want to? <laughs> she gets paid more frequently than anybody does. That's for sure. Uh, but um, it's, it's, it's definitely a challenge. I mean, it's uh, it's things that you, you, you see and there's, no matter what you do as an entrepreneur, where you think something's going to happen, um, things will line up and show you something totally different than what you plan. doesn't matter what you've laid out in your business plan. There's a lot of businesses that laid out, this is how we're going to do this. This is where we're going to be by this point. This is where we're going to be by that point. And we've had to learn to kind of go with the flow. We started off making regular cookies, then we started making vegan and gluten-free cookies, then we started making keto. And um, we're, we're always looking for what's working, what's not working, what's selling, what's not selling. And just sometimes just to be more patient and understanding um, how to spend and how to do things. We understand the controlling costs and things like that, but uh, there are some things where um, I think I didn't know as much as, as spending marketing dollars the right way. Like I was really opposed to spending um, excess money for marketing because we weren't seeing a return on an, on an investment. I'm an ROI guy all day. If I see something come in, I expect something to come back a certain way. And if I had somebody tell me, hey, this is how this works for your market, your industry, this is how you spend your money, we could have spent our money a lot more efficiently and been, you know, maybe a year ahead in the future or maybe moving towards that light speed if you're, you know, Star Star uh, Star Trek kind of person. You know, we're, we're trying to get to a warp technology, but we're still, you know, kind of fidgeting around on the earth trying to figure out how to move forward. So I think that's our biggest thing is just somebody just to sit back from a perspective to say that these are things that we tried and it didn't work. And, and this is how to be more intentional in your space. We've even we're even teaching her how to be more intentional in in her space. As I'm learning, I'm teaching her. So by the time she's my age, I mean, goodness gracious, I, I hope she's like 500 years ahead of where I am at her age. Sounds like she will be. Of course, by then everything will be different too. So yeah. <laughs> with how quite quickly technology is changing everything. Now I'd like you to share one or two tips with the audience. It could be about business or about baking or whatever you choose that can help them in whatever area? So some tips I would say is always um, take time to spend with your family. She also, she's a little bit shy today, but as far as uh, the things like, just like taking time to figure out and balance it and actually taking control of your business. I think it's something that we talked about recently is actually putting things on the schedule and saying we're not doing anything this Sunday or we're not doing anything this day no matter what's going on to actually schedule things because if not you'll let your business run you instead of you running your business and um, something I'd like to share is a lot of times people think that when you own a business that it's easy and you're going to make a whole bunch of money and I say that is completely false you actually work harder than when you work for someone else and you get paid less um, at the beginning. I mean, maybe eventually you can start to, you know, see the returns on the investment, but so many people want to quit their day job and just jump into what they're doing and they haven't counted up the cost. I always say, count up the cost of what you're doing. You don't want to be the one that goes to build a building and you run out of money in the middle, middle of it and everybody looks at you and says, wow, what a fool. He didn't do that. So we, 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 we teach her to plan and to make small steps and even to get this location. It took us a while to be able to prepare for this location. And it's still difficult, I mean, because um, sometimes people don't know where you are, even though you're right here, you have a sign. Like you hadn't heard about us and you're in the area, but you were right across from us and happened to see the sign. So um, just just figuring out how to get, get that word out. So I think those are some things that are really beneficial for uh, keeping some balance in your life and also uh, managing your business and not letting your business manage you. It's kind of ironic that one of the same threads that I hear all of the entrepreneurs that come on the podcast is they all say that 
a lot of people think entrepreneurship is really easy. Oh, I can work four hours a week and I'll make four times as much money as I did at my old job. And that's just not the case. You may end up working more than you did before. So that's one of the things we always hear consistently. You have to have a realistic idea of how much work is going to go into it before you get to the point that, you know, there's always those kind of tipping points where strategies start to snowball and you start seeing better and better results. It, and they're kind of plateaus throughout a business. And so it's going to take you work to get to those and then work to get to the next one. And it's not a four hour work week in most cases. I think sometimes people don't realize how much energy I know. I've, I've watched a video about uh, the difference between the last two degrees to make water boil, how much energy it takes to take it from 210 to 212 degrees is, is intense. If you're not willing to put in that extra effort to get the water to boil, it'll just be hot, but it'll never boil, and it, and it doesn't get to its maximum potential until it boils, and it takes a significant amount of energy. Long days, long nights. There's been days where we start at 6 in the morning, and we don't leave here until 1 in the morning. I mean, I sent her home long before then, but um, it's that effort, and she sees that. She sees, like, well, wow, you were here until this time. But we had orders that had to be done. You did your part. Now it's time for you to go to bed because you're 10, and we will finish. But, uh, you know, we, we, we put in a lot of long hours and put in a lot of effort to make sure that we can get to that 212 degree to make the pot work. Very similar to the concept you hear since we're here in Houston with the Space Center, when rockets go up into space, they spend a huge amount of their fuel just lifting off from the ground. And you've got to get to that point before you can kind of feel some relaxation and feel like things are maybe starting to come in a little bit easier. And I also love your point about scheduling time for family on your calendar. I know that my last corporate job, I was working 80 hour weeks and that family time was not happening very well. So one of the first things I did was make sure that for the most part, I don't work on weekends. So now it's time where you can ask a question of me. It can be about marketing or about my business in general, and I'll provide you some information. Okay. As far as your marketing, um, how do you, when you see a business like ours that is an online business and we also have a retail store, what would be the best mix of marketing that you feel would be effective? Um, like if, if we were to put a plan together to uh, better expose um, our customers. One of the things I like anytime it has to do with food is things that can create user-generated content where you're actually getting your customers, such as the customers who come into the bakery, posting content for you on social media, for example. And there's some different strategies that you can enact. One might be a contest held on your Facebook page. It could be Instagram, maybe having a spot on your wall that has your logo behind it where they can pose holding the baked good and take a selfie and tag your username in the selfie, anything like that that has other people posting content for you right. is super because when you're posting on any social media platform, especially Facebook is getting harder and harder and Instagram is part of Facebook, so that's a consideration with them as well. I recently did an audit of some really large Facebook pages. We're talking pages that had a million or more followers. And you'd think they'd have pretty decent engagement numbers on their posts just because of the amount of followers. But when I went back and did an informal survey of these different pages, they had less than one-tenth of one percent engagement on their posts. And in some cases, where they were paying to boost a post, not going through the Facebook ad system per se, but just that 
boost post link you can do, they were still getting maybe 1% engagement. And that's just kind of terrible numbers, worse than the last numbers I had seen was to expect 2 to 3% engagement. And that's this is like pathetic compared to 2 to 3%, which is pretty pathetic itself. But when other people are posting and tagging you, it is being seen in their timeline because it's probably on their personal timeline and it's being seen by all their friends because the algorithm for our personal timeline is so much different than the algorithm for any business account. So you're exposing your business to more people. In the case of somebody who's coming into a brick and mortar, it's probably a lot of people who are also in the same geographic area. Probably they have a lot of friends who are interested in, say, the keto or the vegan because you tend to find friends who have those same interests. So you kind of automatically expand your reach and you're not having to pay for advertising dollars. So coming up with some interesting strategies that you can use for user-generated content can be really, really helpful. I actually have a PDF with some ideas for that that I'll shoot over to you okay. with some different strategies you can try. But the great thing is, yeah, it may take you a little bit of time to add those posts, you know, to get them set up, to make the graphic, to, make the, to write the copy, and to get them kind of into your flow of standard, you know, marketing practices. But once you get it done, it's like people are advertising for you. And right. so if you want to keep your budget reasonable and you have foot traffic, it works really great for brick and mortar and it works really great for food establishments, no matter whether it's a restaurant or a cafe or a bakery, because people usually like showing off those kind of pretty baked goods, pretty right plates of food, a great looking cup of cappuccino, and so they'll be really likely. And if you just set up like a selfie station where something on the wall, they can take a selfie and it's got your logo, you'll be prompting them, even if you forget to ask, if it's like right near maybe the door before they exit or something, you'll kind of be prompting them to do it even without you having to ask. And you can also kind of, you know, do flat out bribery. Have some extra cookies sitting there. Maybe they're smaller cookies or something. And say, hey, if, if you'll stop at our selfie station, we'll give you a cookie. Bribery works with me every time. Like you bribe me with a cookie, I'm doing it. So that can be a really great way to expand your reach far beyond what you could ever do with your own social media and pay-per-click advertising. And just simply finding creative ways to get the customers that are coming in to do the marketing for you. Well, that's actually a really good idea. I've had somebody else mention that to us recently saying, you know, like she showed me a picture of a place and the guy has a, a crazy little sign on the wall and everybody comes and takes a picture of it. Or even right in our own parking lot is people who um, it's become like a cult-like following. They like to take pictures in front of the sign and say that I've been at this particular restaurant. So, um, it's become a, a, a place to go to, not just because of the food, but because it's, it's, it's a destination of choice because of their online activity. So it, organically, they, they've grown a lot because of that. You can also use a strategy before they get into your store where you put out a message that if they make a post and tag you in the post, maybe commenting on what their favorite big good is or something like that, that if they come into the store and show you the post, that you'll give them a 10% discount off their order or something like that. So things you can do before they get there to encourage them to come in and things while they're there to spread the message further works really great. Now I want you to share how people can get in touch with you and where they can find you. But before that, this is a chance for you to ask any other questions or share any other information that you want to provide to the audience. I, th I think what you've given us has been invaluable just to look at things from that perspective. We try to do a lot of things organically. 
And um, a lot of things, a lot of our growth has happened word of mouth. Sometimes it's just because of, you know, we both are educated, but that's not necessarily our strength. But we just try, we figure out what's working and we try to duplicate that. And um, I, I think that that's wonderful. But, um, you know, if we think of anything else, I guess we'll shoot you an email. Um, we won't harass you too much. Uh, we oh, you can harass me. It's okay. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, maybe, maybe each time you come, I'll offer you. Offer me, offer me a bribe. <laughs> bribe me. Here, I have a question, Vicky. You want a cookie? I got it. I got it. It'll cookie. work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the local Houstonians, I want you to tell them where they can find you, like geographically, and then for other people who are interested in the business, share your web and social media info. Okay. Uh, locally, we're at uh, 10846 uh, Westheimer Road. That's in Houston. We're just outside of Bellway 8. Before you get to Wilcrest uh, in the West Chase District, and um, if you're looking for us online, you can find us at uh, kbsfoods.com, uh, and we are also at Kai's Baking Studio at, on Facebook and on Instagram, and we're on uh, YouTube also. We do videos. We have not named that yet. We're getting really close to being able to name that, uh, but um, that's where we're available on social media. Okay, great. It was so great to have both of you, Makai, as our youngest guest so far. I'm guessing that you'll be the youngest one for quite a while because usually we have, you know, older people like me and your dad. And Roderick, great to have you as well. And be looking for me shortly. I have to go out and run some errands later this week, so I'll probably be swinging by there. And for all of you watching or listening, if you have a marketing question, you can ask your question down below in the comment or discussion area, or you can visit our website, vickywoo.marketing, and in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a chat bubble icon, and you can ask your question there, and we will answer you directly, and we may even use your question on an upcoming episode.